have our court reporter, Jess Braven, who's with us on the phone door from Washington, D.C. Jess, what did the court tell us? Well, the court told us that the human gene is not patentable, even if it is isolated from the human body, and that was really the issue here. Myriad Genetics, a, uh, a biotech firm, uh, had a practice of, of extracting uh, the human gene genes that were uh, indicators for, in particular, breast cancer and ovarian cancer, and it had acquired a patent for the isolated strands of those genes, which were uh, uh, essential in doing these sorts of genetic tests, ones which became, I think, quite uh, quite well known recently when Angelina Jolie had a uh, op-ed article describing what she did uh, after taking a test using this type of of uh, extracted or isolated human gene. Uh, that the uh, patentability of those isolated genes was challenged by researchers and scientists, other people who did not help hold that patent. And today the Supreme Court, uh, in an opinion by Justice Clarence Thomas, held that the isolated gene is not patentable and threw out that patent. So it's a very significant opinion, one of the ones that we've been waiting for at the end of the term, uh, and uh, one that uh, really uh, reflects the court beginning to grapple with a lot of uh, 21st century technology that certainly was not anticipated when uh, the concept of patents was written into the U.S. Constitution. Yeah, of course. Uh, it sounds like this is going to be, uh, it's going to have a big dollar effect for these companies, certainly for the company involved, but I mean, uh, for other companies in this business, in the business of, of looking at genes and trying to come up with new, tech, new technologies, new uh, treatments, how big a deal is this from a business point of view? Well, uh, as I say, time will tell, but it's hard to, it's hard to know whether this is a this is good for business or bad for business because it makes it makes the isolated form of gene available to many more researchers and things and, and a lot of things related to the use of these genes are patentable for example the method used to isolate them that remains uh, a patentable technology moreover uh, forms of the gene that are not naturally occurring can be patented. In other words, if they are manipulated in some way or, or, the, or something is done to them that makes them different from the way they occur in the body, those versions of the gene, known as cDNA in this particular uh, case, are uh, or remain patentable. So uh, the, the main immediate impact is going to be uh, the much broader availability of a test, uh, a genetic test for uh, 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 likelihood of breast and ovarian cancer. That's going to be the most immediate right. effect because that, that test has been to a degree controlled by Myriad Genetics, which, uh, which has had a patent until today. Now, to be sure, we should actually give a caveat. The opinion just came out. I haven't read it carefully. Uh, there may be more nuances or maybe more elements to the opinion that will cause us to revise our initial assessment. But uh, the basic point is that the isolated form of the human gene is considered a, a product of nature rather than uh, mankind, yeah. and therefore it can't be patented. All right. Jess Braven, thank you very much. Of course.